Welcome to the next part in this series of doctrinal lectures, um, where we'll treat, treat the, the third topic here, uh, creation, and following that, uh, providence in a, in a separate lecture. Um, creation. Now what is creation? Uh, and where do we get the knowledge of creation from? Uh, creation is something we can only know uh, for certain about from uh, from scripture. Uh, Hebrews 11.3 says, By faith we understand that the world worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. There are different pagan theories about uh, how the world came into being. Uh, emanation from God in some way, pantheism, that, that the world and God is, is one. Uh, the Big Bang Theory, uh, that everything came from nothing in a way, and uh, evolution connected with Big Bang Theory. Uh, deism, the, the thought that uh, God started the machine and then left it to itself so that, that the world functions in a mechanical way. Uh, that has to do with providence also. Uh, that we'll come back to in a, in a separate lecture. And then uh, Aristotle uh, has this idea of that the, that the universe is uh, eternal. Uh, now these are wrong and, uh, and, and where we can know for certainty about how the world came into being is Holy Scripture. The doctrine of creation is connected to the doctrine of the Trinity. Chemnitz uh, says, quoted in uh, Smith's Doctrinal Theology of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, um, in his uh, 20th uh, chapter, says, Thus far in the article of the Trinity, God has been described as he is in his secret nature, and mention has indeed been also made of the works of God, but especially of those which divinity works within itself apart from every uh, creature. But God, who has made darkness his hiding place, and who dwells in inaccessible light, coming forth from his secret abode, has manifested himself also in works at extra. And because the first manifestation at extra was made in the work of creation, the article concerning the creation immediately follows. Uh, so, uh, the, the doctrine of the Trinity treated with the Trinity as he is in, in himself, uh, not in relation to others. And the doctrine of creation is the first, le it's the first topic where we deal with, with uh, God as he relates to, uh, to others uh, and his external work. What is creation then? Chemnitz, in uh, the Preuss translation of his Loci, page 156, uh, defines creation this way. Creation is an action of the one God, and indeed of the only God, the work of the undivided trinity of the persons of the deity by which the Father, together with the co-eternal Son and the co-eternal Holy Spirit, established all things visible and invisible, except for his own divine essence, not from matter which existed from eternity, but out of nothing. That is, when there was nothing, yet when God spoke, suddenly things began to be and to exist. And all things which God made were certainly good, and God preserves and sustains what he has created. So creation is an action of the one uh, triune God alone. There are no other prime movers that helped God create. It is the action of God alone. Uh, it is the action of the three persons of the Trinity together. It's not only the work of the Father, uh, as one might get the impression when one reads only the, the Creed. Uh, but we ascribe certain works, especially to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But it doesn't mean that it, that that uh, creation, for example, is the work only of the Father. Uh, everything created was created by God the Father through the Son with the help of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians uh, eight verse six says, uh, "Yet for us there is one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we for Him, and one Lord Jesus Christ through whom all things and through through whom are all things and through whom we live." 1 Corinthians 8, 6. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Uh, John 1, 3. So, everything was made through Jesus Christ. Uh, Genesis 1, 2 includes also the Spirit as one who was present at, uh, at and in the beginning. 
uh, it says the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Uh, but Psalm 33 verse 6 is more clear. It says by the word of the Lord the heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth or the spirit of his mouth. That's the same word. And here the word of the Lord may be seen as the, the second person of the Trinity, the, the eternal Son of God. Uh, and the breath here is the Spirit. Also Psalm 104 verse 30, You sent forth your Spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Uh, so according to these scripture passages, uh, the, the, the eternal Son of God, uh, the Word, uh, and the Spirit also uh, were at work in the creation. Chemnitz says, in, uh, it's quoted in Smith's Doctrine of Theology of the Evangelical Lutheran Church again, uh, We must not dispute too curiously concerning the distinction of persons in the work of creation, but let us be content with the revelation that all things were created by the Eternal Father through the Son, while the Holy Ghost hovered over them. Romans 11.36 but these things are not to be construed into an inequality of persons as the Arians blasphemously assert that the Son was God's instrument in creation, just as the workman uses an axe. For the prepositions apo, drn, those are Greek prepositions, do not divide the nature but express the properties of a nature that is one and unconfused. Um, so what he's saying here is that Although there is an order in, in, in how the persons are mentioned, uh, it doesn't mean that that uh, creation is, is an act of the Father alone in which the Son and the Holy Ghost are only uh, instruments that are moved by the Father. Uh, everything that exists, both visible and invisible, except, except God himself, has been created. Uh, Colossians 1, verse 16 to 17. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. It also says, Who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever. Psalm 146, verse 6. Um, so everything was created by God uh, in the beginning, uh, both in the visible and the invisible. Uh, and this uh, also means that there was nothing before that uh, that God created everything out of. Uh, so this speaks to the issue of uh, creatio, creatio ex nihilo. Uh, all matter by which creation was formed was also created uh, in the beginning. Uh, Psalm 148 verse 5, Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. Hebrews 11 3, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Um, so, and we get back to that when we treat the the individual days and see that all matter was created uh, in in the beginning and then formed in the in the days after that. Um, but all matter was created at that time. All that God made is good. Genesis one thirty three. Then God saw everything he had, that He had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Uh, and 1 John 2.16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Um, Gerhard, who is quoted in Smil, summarizes uh, this, this way. Um, this is all comprehended in the definition. Creation is an act of God who is one and alone, and an undivided work of the three persons of the Godhead, by which the Father, through the co-eternal Son, in the co-eternal Holy Spirit of his own free will, in six distinct days formed all things, visible and invisible, not out of some materials coexisting with himself from eternity, but from nothing for the glory of his own name and the benefit of man. And all things that God made are very good. This summarizes uh, pretty much what we've been saying here. Um, 
creation was also made by the word. Uh, it was a, a real speaking according to Hebrews 11, 3, and also when we see read in Genesis. Uh, and the word is also the one through whom God speaks. So, and that's why uh, the eternal son is called the word, because he's the one through whom God speaks. But there's also a word that comes from him. Um, the time of creation, uh, that depends on on uh, which manuscripts we use, uh, because there's a difference between the Masoretic, the Hebrew text, and the uh, Septuagint text in some of the genealogies in Genesis. Uh, and so so it can be between 6,000 and 7,500 years, and we shouldn't make a doctrine out of that. Um, the six days, uh, they were real days, uh, and we can see that from the fact that it, became, it was morning and evening, first, second, and so on day, and from and also from Exodus uh, 20, which speaks about the Sabbath and speaks about how God created uh, the heavens and the earth and all in them in six days, uh, and then says that we should that they should uh, rest on the seventh day. Uh, now there is a certain order in this, so that uh, it's it's two times three days. The, the lights are created on the first day. The, the light is created on the first day, and correspondingly the big lights on the on the fourth, and uh, the heaven on the second day, and 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 uh, the animals in the heavens on the on the fifth day, and then the, the earth on the third day, and and uh, and the uh, and what is to be on the earth is on the on the on the sixth day, uh, the, the living creatures on the earth. Let's look at the individual dates. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Um, so, uh, this was all created at the beginning of time, before that was only eternity. Time began with the creative act of God. Uh, and the beginning is also therefore part of the first day, uh, as we read in Exodus 20, 11, For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and held it. So we know from this that everything was created in the six day, days. So the beginning is included in the first day. Uh, this speaks against uh, some modern gap theories who think there is a gap between the beginning and then the first day. Um, the first day we might see as as where all matter is created, uh, the unformed matter of the heaven and the earth. Here is the unformed matter of heaven and earth, because later they are separated. Uh, the Spirit was present here, and then it says, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Genesis 1, 1-3. Uh, so God said, He spoke through the Son, His Word. Uh, the light here created might be... Uh, is a sort of light or a reference perhaps also to the ordering of the universe, which was dark and void before. Um, then on the second day, then God said, let, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, so the evening and the morning were the second day. God now began to form the matter. He separated heaven from earth. Heaven was already created, but it was formed into, uh, but it was now formed into a firmament. Uh, so the heavens were not formed from nothing here uh, on the second day, but they were formed from the matter that was created on the first day. So all matter was created on the first day, uh, and then formed in the in the days after that. Um, this is this, this action on the second day is described also in Psalm 104. Who cover yourself with the, with light as with a garment? Who stretch out the heavens like a curtain? Then on the third day, it says, Then God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. 
And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. This is described also in Psalm 104, uh, verse 6 to 9. You covered it uh, with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they fled. At the voice of your thunder they hastened away. They went up over the mountains. They went up into the valleys to the place which you founded for them. You have set a boundary that they may not pass over, that they may not return to cover the earth. Um, and again in Psalm 33 verse 7, he gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. Uh, so here on the third day, the waters are separated from the dry land, the dry land where man is to be made. So here the earth is formed, one might say, the, the dry land where, where man is to live. Uh, and then on the third day it continues, then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruits tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in, it, in, it, in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Um, that's that's still the third day where, where God he uh, he puts the things into the dry land that is to be there for man and and uh, and creatures to live on the dry land that he then creates on the sixth day. Um, Psalm 104 verse 10 says he sent the springs into the valleys they flow among the hills, and Psalm 104 verse. 14 to 15 also describes this. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and vegetation for the service of man, that he may bring forth food from the earth, and wine that makes glad the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread which strengthens the man's heart. Uh, so on the third day, the earth, the dry land, is made habitable for men. So we see this structure again that this corresponds to the sixth day. Uh, so that it is uh, the creation is really two times three days. Uh, then on the fourth day, we hear about light again, as on the first day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Uh, perhaps here he created the lights from the light that he created on the first day. Uh, so that he was ordering light, just like he was ordering the waters and so on, um, in 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 the uh, on on the on on the second and and and, and third days. Uh, he uh, separates day from night here, and uh, he makes signs for seasons to give light on the earth. Uh, this again shows that earth where man is to live is the center of everything. So everything in the universe is really created for the purpose of man living on earth. God here created also the seasons of the year. Uh, and we have also here a description of the benefits of day and night. Um, in Psalm 104, verse 20, it says, You make darkness and it is you make darkness and it is night in which all the beasts of the forest creep about. And verse 22 to 23, when the sun rises, they gather together and lie down in their dens. Man goes out to his work and to his labor until the evening. So the benefits of day and night is that the, the, the animals of the forest can creep around at night and uh, and also man can sleep and in night and and uh, stand up on when it's day and, and go to his work. Um, uh, 
You get to the fifth day. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters are bounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. God created now uh, the sea creatures and the flying creatures, but not out of nothing. Uh, Kenneth and Gerhard understand it as, as if, that, that they create out of the out of the water. Uh, that might be true, uh, but nevertheless, here he talks about the the heavens. Uh, so he's uh, so he just like he spoke of, of the light. Now he spoke speaks about the heavens again, um, and and the sea. Um, Psalm one hundred and four. Also treats this in verse 25 to 26. This great and wide sea in which are innumerable teeming things, living things, both small and great. There the ships sail about. There is that Leviathan which you made to play there. So Leviathan, the, the great sea creatures, were also created here. And God commands them to be fruitful and multiply. Uh, God blesses creation so they can procreate. This is an effect of the word of God. Uh, so the word of God continues to have this effect um, that animals procreate, um, they are fruitful and multiply. And this is really a, a parallel to how the, the, the first word of institutions, they, uh, they uh, are also effective now um, when they are repeated over bread and wine. <coughs> now we come to the sixth day, God created the living creatures on earth. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creatures according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God creates animals on the earth where man is uh, supposed to live. Uh, God created the animals according to their kind, uh, so there's no uh, space for evolution here. None of these would have harmed man if he hadn't lost dominion over, over them, which he did when he lost the image of God. Um, and this brings us now to the creation of man. Um, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 27 and then again in Genesis chapter 2 this creation of man is described. Then God said let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over the cattle uh, on the earth and over all, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him. And uh, we have a parallel to this in uh, Genesis 2, which zooms in on the creation of man. Uh, and it says uh, in verse 7, In the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Let us see how God proceeded when he created man. He says, let us not let there be, as he did with the other uh, creatures. So the Trinity wanted to show that this is the crown of the work of creation. He prepared the material from which he created man, moisture and dust. And then he formed man instead of saying, let the earth bring forth as he did with the other things. So this is like a potter with his clay. This is described in a very personal manner. Uh, when speaking about the animals, the earth brings forth the living creatures, but man is made a living soul by the inbreathing of God. And this shows the high status of man's soul. Um, now Chemnitz comments on this in uh, his Losi, uh, or the English translation, um, page 164-165. God created the soul of man by breathing it into him. That is, beside the vital spirit of life principle which man has in common with animals, God created a rational soul and is said to have breathed it into man because he poured into that soul 
divine light, wisdom and righteousness, etc., in order that man might be the image and likeness of God. Christ also, as he undertook to restore in man the image of God, used the process of breathing in or upon as when he breathed upon the apostles as, and gave them the Holy Spirit, John 20:22. 20, and there is no doubt that he intended to lead us to thoughts of that first inbreathing. And this is, is a thought that I think Chemnitz has from Cyril of Alexandria, who's, who makes the same point, that uh, there is a connection between the image of God and, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that was uh, given through also through this breathing uh, into, into uh, Adam. Um, um, what is the image of God? And, and what is this connection to the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? Now we uh, we see in the New Testament that, that the image of God is Christ in a sense. In uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 3 to 4, it says, But even if our gospel is veiled, and it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So here, the, the Christ is the image of God that shines upon people through the gospel. Uh, Colossians 1, 13 to 15. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Uh, so again, he's the image of the invisible God. He is the... Uh, the one representing God towards man. <coughs> uh, Hebrews 1, 1 to 3. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself perched our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Uh, he is the express image of his person, uh, or his, his substance. Uh, now this image of God uh, uh, has to do with, with, with sonship also, uh, and with Christ being uh, the one through whom God governs everything. Uh, he's the one through whom God created everything and still governs everything. Uh, and it also has to do in, with being a son of someone. Because we read in Genesis 5.3, After the fall, and Adam lived 130 years and began a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. Uh, so, so here Genesis 5 shows that this has to do, do with, with, uh, with how a son resembles his father uh, in a way. Um, the image of God is restored to believers in Christ. Colossians 3, 9 to 10. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Uh, so the image of God includes the original righteousness and holiness. Uh, but but given it is, that it is connected to the Son who rules everything, it, it is also connected to man's dominion, uh, as described in uh, also in, in Genesis one, uh, which says, "Let let them have dominion." Right after spoke, spoke about the image of God, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So the Son is the one through whom God rules everything, and man's being created in the image of God has to do also uh, with being vice regents uh, on the earth, vice regents of God, uh, but to rule with his righteousness uh, and holiness. So, so those are included in this dominion also. Um, <clears throat> the image of God... Uh, Um, can be seen as, as participation in the sonship of the Son. Man is both made in the image of God like Christ is the image of God, and to have dominion like Christ has dominion. So man was created to have fellowship with the Trinity, 
by participation in the sonship of the eternal son, not his uh, not his eternal divinity, but his sonship, his sonly relationship to God, and and his relation to creation as the son of God, uh, as created sons of God in whom the Holy Spirit dwelt. Uh, this is seen also in the genealogy of Christ. In Luke uh, 3, thir uh, 38, the son of Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Here, Adam is called the son of God. Um, and uh, and again, Cyril made this point, that uh, reference to John 20, 22, and Chemist does too, that, uh, that when Christ breathed on the disciples, he, he uh, wanted to to uh, lead us our thoughts to that first inbreathing of the Holy Spirit uh, of the soul into Adam and Eve. And originally it was uh, the Holy Spirit that was also dwelling in them through that inbreathing. Then uh, man was created man and woman. Uh, Genesis 1, 27 to 28. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over everything, the thing that moves on the earth. And Genesis 2, 21-24, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So man was created in the beginning as man and woman. This is part of the created order. Uh, it doesn't mean that this uh, ma being man and woman is part of the image of God, as some have thought. Uh, it isn't. Uh, um, uh, that would make Adam not in the image of God before the creation of Eve, or make him into some kind of hermaphrodite. But, but uh, no, uh, that's not the image of God, but it's closely connected to man's creation as in the image of God. Man was created before woman, that's important. Uh, Adam was created before Eve, and Adam was given the commandment. Uh, then they are told to uh, procreate, to multiply and, and fill the earth. Uh, they were to, in a way, expand the Garden of Eden by procreation, so that more children of God would, would uh, fill the earth and worship God on earth. Then what about the angels? That's, that's almost a subject in, it, in itself. So I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, read a quote from Chemnitz, where he summarizes the doctrine of angels. Uh, in his Losi, page uh, 165. It is sufficient that we know this, that the angels did not exist by themselves, and that they were not begotten of the substance of God, but were created. And second, that the angels were not from eternity, and had not existed before the beginning, when all things, uh, which are uh, heaven and earth, visible and invisible, began to exist. For in the beginning there was only he through whom all things were made, and who is the eternal one. John 1.1 1, 1. And three, that the angels were created before the human race, which may be concluded from Job 38 to four, uh, verse 4 to 7. For God says in regard to the human race, Where were you when all the sons of God shouted for joy? He is referring to the founding of the earth, the creation of the stars, and he adds this in regard to the angels. And finally he says regarding the human race, Where were you then? Verse 4. So this, I'll conclude the first part of this. Uh, third topic of uh, creation and providence, and uh, the next lecture will be on providence.